Mahalo! Welcome back to Ashok's Army. Today we are going to be reviewing some of the basics of off-axis aberrations, how to interpret aberrations from transverse Rayfan plots, and then actually measure coma and astigmatism using a Hartman mask in our lab. So let's take it over to Caleb. So coma occurs when the magnification of an optical system varies with ray pupil position and field height. When a system only has coma, the tangential and sagittal rays still focus at the same distance but at different heights, and there is no effect on the focus shift. Now when looking at the ray flam plots, it's easy to tell if there's coma when you connect a line from here to here. If the intersection of that line uh, uh, goes through the origin of the ray flam plot, there is no coma. If it does not go through the origin of the ray flam plot, then there is coma. So if you look at your ray fan plot and it's quadratic, you'll know that there is some amount of coma in your system. And then you know if you're increasing your field height, um, the maximum of your quadratic shape is going to increase linearly with your H. So astigmatism occurs when the tangential and sagittal rays focus on at different distances. With pure astigmatism, tangential rays focus onto a perfect point at the tangential focus, but form a vertical line at the sagittal focus. And then the sagittal rays are focused onto a perfect point at the sagittal focus, but a horizontal line at the tangential focus. The sagittal focus will coincide with the paraxial focus. This is why when we look at the ray fan plot for astigmatism, there's no astigmatism in the sagittal plane, but in the tangential plane, we can see that astigmatism decreases linearly with pupil position. This picture seen below shows how the rays will stretch depending on the focus shift between the tangential and sagittal planes. The medial focus is typically where we want to focus our systems to balance out the tangential and sagittal astigmatism. Astigmatism varies quadratically with field and then astigmatism will decrease linearly with pupil position. So let's show a little tip and trick on how we know if it's going to vary linearly, quadratically, or has a cubic function. So the tip is um, when we have our W040 or our W131 for coma, you're going to take this middle number here, which represents your rho or your pupil um, dependency. So this 4 represents rho to the fourth. You're going to subtract 1 from the exponent to get approximately equal to yt cubed, meaning it's going to be a cubic function. You can do the same for coma, where you have a row cubed. Now you have to reduce that by 1 to get yp squared, and now you know it's quadratically. It's setup time. OK, so first we're starting with our source, our laser source. Then we have our Keplerian beam expander. So our spatial filter it has a 20 micron pinhole um, and a 0.4 Na. Um, next, we have our 200 millimeter lens. Um, just that's our collimation lens. Our mirror just reflected onto our next rail. This is our uh, mask here. Next, we have our lens. This is our test lens to our microscope. Our objective is a 0.25 NA. And then we have our mask grid right here. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. All right, so with our Hartman mask right here, we can see there are five holes representing the rays propagating through our system. And now when they go through the lens and the microscope, we should see the pattern of the five spots onto the note card. So as you can see, there's this grid, and this mesh is caused by the interference of all those holes lining up onto each other and interfering. Because when the rays travel through the Hartman mask, the marginal rays and sheaf rays are projected simultaneously, and the marginal rays may not all focus with each other. And so that is why we see this interference pattern of those uh, positions not aligning with the crosshair, and thus those five spots interfere with each other and create this grid pattern. All right, the next step of this lab is to measure coma. And first, we need to create an off-axis source because you can't measure coma on axis. So first, we're going to move our, our microscope a millimeter towards us and then adjust our mirror over here using translation and rotation to go through the center hole of our mask here and this represents the chief ray so now we just have an off axis source going through our microscope onto our screen now we're going to cover up all of the holes except one of the um, horizontal holes near the outer edge of the Hartman mask because that's going to represent the marginal rays coming into our screen over here so the ones that are horizontal um, are going to be our tangential marginal arrays to measure tangential coma. And then we'll repeat this step, the vertical holes, because that will be our sagittal coma aberration that we'll measure. All right, so we covered up all the holes except the left and then all the holes except the right holes. And then we measured the, the displacement of the beam. Um, we expect it to be different because of coma. Now, everybody, we're going to cover up all the holes except the vertical holes because we want to measure our sagittal coma. But when we did this for the bottom when we were just letting the ray propagate through the top hole and the bottom hole, we noticed there was no displacement on our micrometer. 
That means there must be no sagittal coma. Oh my god, that makes so much sense because this lives at the paraxial focal plane. There should be no sagittal coma ever. For measuring astigmatism, we first covered just the vertical holes to measure our tangential astigmatism. And right now we have covered the horizontal holes so that the vertical holes are showing. Um, and that will be our sagittal astigmatism. Um, and so we find this sagittal focus by adjusting the microscope in the Y and Z direction so that the two rays from the Hartman mass align with each other. And then we record this uh, difference from our original position of the microscope. And then we did the same thing, but for different fields. So we repeated this by adjusting the microscope to a different field position, and then adjusting the mirror so that the beam goes through the center of the hole, the chief ray goes through, lining up on the crosshairs. And then we repeat the measurements that we just explained for our chromatic and astigmatic aberration calculations. And we did it for fields 5, 4, and 2.5. Great addition. That's Rachel. She wants to be in the video, so we put her in there.